I often hear people with Parkinson's described by his or her symptoms. She has tremors. He has dyskinesia. She drags a foot when she walks. He is very stiff. They both drool. And although scientists and clinicians are familiar with these terms and what they mean, I often question whether they know what it means in terms of living with this incurable progressive disease. So I have created a few vignettes of how living with Parkinson's affects my daily life. I often ask for help cutting my meat. Steaks are hard for me to cut, and chicken, and lamb, and lobster, of course, the few times I get it, is nearly impossible for me to deal with, so I always get help from the waiter. When I go to the movies, I sit at the end of the row because my moving with dyskinesia may bother people or my leg may really be bothering me and I may be more comfortable standing up. And sitting at the end of the row allows me to get up without bothering anyone else. I have never been considered a coordinated person, but these days I find I'm dropping and breaking more things than I used to. I don't know how normal people turn over in bed. I now have to lay on my back with my knees up and then I push my, my back and butt off the bed. Then I flop over as hard as I can to one side or the other. And that's how I turn over these days. Sleeping can be problematic. In the middle of the night, I often find I am trapped in the bed sheets and try as I might I can't seem to unwind myself and escape from the sheet's clutches. When I go to receptions, even events for people with Parkinson's, food and beverages are often served, but there are no tables. So there I am standing and shaking without the ability to eat or drink. Because one of my legs is in constant motion with dyskinesia, dystonia, and tremors, my husband and I often sit at a bistro table at a restaurant's bar. That way I can swing my leg when I eat and get some relief. About 30 years ago, I lost my sense of smell, which also affected my sense of taste, which was a shame. But on the bright side, I can't smell the kitty's litter box anymore. Taking a plane ride in the cat car, oh, I mean coach, section of a plane can be a nightmare. On one five-hour trip from Phoenix to Washington, D.C., the person in front of me moved his seat all the way back, and I was trapped the entire time with rampant dyskinesia and dystonia.